Hey, what's up, ecosystem? What do you know about non-consensual tow? You ever had a tow bill that made you crazy? In an accident, broken down, parked in the wrong place, they have your vehicle, they demand money. What are you going to do? Uh, this is going to get out of hand quickly, and you need good advice. Abusive Tow Authority wants to help you. Tonight, you're going to meet Dan Oliveri of ATA. Plus, we have a discussion panel with Rich Bren Insurance, Brendan Dawson Accident Plan. Let's get educated. Buckle in, because it's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back again to Auto Transport Intel. Thank you so much for joining me on Tuesday Nights Live. Great to have you here. I know you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do join the live chat, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. Please let us know what's going on with you. Hey, welcome to the show. Let me tell you what's going on. If this is your first time here, I want you to feel welcome. I really do. Uh, we're proud of what we have going on on Tuesday nights. This is the 138th show in a row on a Tuesday night. So please do say hello into the live chat. Let us know what's going on with you. Product, promotion, company, sell yourself. What do you got? You a carrier? You a broker? You a dealer? Let us know. We want to know. And then we're going to go into industry news. At about the quarter hour, we're going to go into industry news. That's national news, social media news, good news, bad news. What do I got tonight? I got broker stuff, uh, dispatching. We've got uh, car sales information, reopening America, all that stuff. That's in the industry news. And after we spend time there, we are going to go into our featured interview. I'm really excited to have as a guest tonight, Dan Oliveri of abusive tow authority you're gonna want to learn more about this this is to that one guy out there that is sitting there thinking man what am i gonna do this is what you're gonna do you're gonna talk to uh abusive tow authority and you're gonna learn what to do so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna go into a discussion panel we're gonna bring in rich bren friend of the show vp of insurance at pfa transportation insurance and surety services as well as Brendan Dawson of Accident Plan. He's also been on the show, friend of the show. This is going to be a great show, so I'm excited to have everybody here with me tonight. We're going to learn a lot, and we're going to try to keep you informed and entertained. It's infotainment, so stick around. We're going to be right back. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today.
That is Sue's information over at Murphy Auto Transport. If you have a broker question, dispatch question, carrier question, you want to talk to Sue. She's got so much information. In fact, she is my co-host every other week on Thursdays with Dispatching Live. You aren't going to want to miss that. Okay, so let's go into Hello Live Chat. I'm happy to see you here. All right, so i got to go back to the beginning of the chat. I'm over here looking at my screen, so bear with me. Mark is here. Mark from Superflow here trying to get a jump on tie this week. Man, thank you so much, Mark, for tuning in. Uh, Superflow Systems is always an important friend of the show. Mark contributes a lot. If you've got a software question, he's right there. Mark wants to help answer your questions. Carlos is here from ACB Logistics. What's up, Carlos? Thanks for tuning in. You are part of the core. Also, by the way, let me know if you can hear me and see me okay. I think so. I think we're good. I hope the audio is not too hot. Are the lights too hot? <laughs> I hope not. We are live, by the way. We're excited to be live because we are alive. It's Tuesday nights live. So let me know what's going on with you. Okay. Ty is here. Is this where you tow cars? Yes, Ty. This is where you tow cars. Uh, let's see here. Accident plan. Brandon is here. Brandon is in the live chat. Listen, if you are in an accident or you want to prepare for an accident, whether you're a single owner operator or you're a trucking fleet, Brendan is here. Accident plan is here. You can visit accidentplan.com. So thank you, Brendan, for joining the live chat. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, Wild Bill is in here somewhere, I believe. Charles, Meth Charles Method is with us. What's up, Charles? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being part of this show. And Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly, for being in the live chat, sharing the information. Really helps me out. I'm only doing uh, several things at once, so that really helps me. Thanks for being in the live chat. Uh, Bill Bad Apples is with us. What's up, Bill? Thanks for tuning in. Nick Madore. Hey, what's up? It is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, and we're very excited to be here, so thank you so much. Thanks for checking in. Ty is the auction whisperer. Yes, he is. In fact, we are cooking something up. Uh, June 1st, Monday, June 1st, is going to be the first CTS business coaching monthly meeting. There'll be more information about that soon, but uh, yeah, we're excited to have that. And that's not on this show. That's going to be a separate show. The Ty at CTS show. Michael Culler, better late than never. Dude, you're here. You made it. You're right on time. If you're just tuning in right now, man, you just made it just in time to say hello in the live chat. Let us know what's going on with you. As you can see, live, live chat is a big part of the show. Gary P., hey, all fellow viewers. Thanks for tuning in, Gary. means a lot. It is Tuesday night, and we are live. Martin Meredith checking in. Hope everyone is doing well. Thank you, Martin. Really appreciate that. And yeah, how is everybody doing? You guys, everybody's safe? Are you getting into the Costco and you bring your mask and you got your gloves and your and your Purell? Can you get the toilet paper? What? It's not toilet paper now. It's all about the meat. What's going on with the meat? Uh, loads from all to all went from 13 to 34. Woo! That is awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. That is such good news. Thank you. Actually, I think everybody in the industry is feeling a lot better than they were a month ago. Dealers. Now, the OEMs have the hardest part, getting started up and the supply chains. We got that in industry news. Let's see here. What else we got? Oh, Joe McCleary. Hello, all. Reopen this planet. Yep, that's right. We're reopening the planet. And uh, <laughs> let's see what Jeff Seltzer. Good evening, everyone. Lots of familiar faces. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Again, I know that there are there are so many more webinars now. There's Facebook groups and man, there's a webinar for everything now. It's pretty wild. But um, you know what? Information is key. And what else are you gonna do? Go outside. Good evening, everyone. Kenneth, you first transport checking in. Kenneth Hot, thank you so much for saying hello and let me know where you are and what you're doing. Um, he's like, did I say? Did I let him know what I'm doing? Uh, no, really, seriously, I appreciate it. You know, it means a lot, and um, because we're here, we're together. We're actually this is the best it gets right now. This is your trade show. All right, <laughs> this is it. Um, Hey, hey, Jay, sun is shining in Arizona, says Richard Bryn. All right, Rich, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being in the live chat. You got an insurance question? Rich is right here. He's here. He's in the live chat. Oh, my gosh. 
five by five in the pipe. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate that. Look and sound good. Thank you so much. I worry about that. You guys, man, I stress like crazy. I even get, look, I get, I get wound up about my, how my earbuds look. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I walk around, I, I start cracking knuckles around this place. You guys get back to work. There's nobody there. Kenneth Hawk. <laughs> oh, Danny B. What's up, Danny B.? Thanks for tuning in. And I appreciate it. Part of the core. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. You get a plug. You get a plug. You get a plug. Uh, Ryan Girardi. Howdy, ATI family. What's up, Ryan? Thanks for tuning in. I know you had a busy day. And um, we were just doing some more planning on Friday. Ryan's going to be on the show next Tuesday night. Shoot, man. That's coming up fast. That's going to be great. Got a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. It's not just Ryan stuff. It's not just ATI stuff. Wait till you hear. Exotic Hotshot. Exotic in the house. What's up? Coming in from Kansas City. No way. Tuesday is my KC day. Hey, that's cool. Nothing like being on a regular schedule. You know you're in the right place. You got the right show. You're ready to go, Exotic Hotshot. That's awesome, man. Jay, I just sent you the stuff for the show needed for tonight. All right, I'll grab it. Thank you so much. Uh, putting COVID in the rearview mirror. Isn't that? Eh, that is what we all want to hear. Putting COVID in the rearview mirror. Amen to that. Can I get a... Yes, can I get a siren? Thank you so much. Auto Converse, good evening, Jay and ATI. Thank you, Auto Converse. Kenneth Hot, now we got to hope those killer hornets don't get us. It's from one thing to the next. After a while, don't you, you start to wonder about those news stories, right? Like, what's going to be next? You know, like, I don't know, Teflon pans messing up the air. Cable Trader says hello. What's up, Cable Trader? What's going on? I love Teflon pans. That'd be terrible. Hey, what's up, Ty and Jay? Seven Seas Transport is with us. What's going on, Seven Seas? Thanks for tuning in. Ty is laughing with me, not at me. That's a good thing. It is good to be here on a Tuesday night. Guys, I really do appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in, saying hello. Keep the live chat going. We just That's just the hello. That's not the end all, be all. We got to make it in time for industry news. I think we're going to be right on time. Ooh, Freight Lady BJ made it. Hey, what's up? And listen, don't be shy. Listen, if you guys are... Uh, what else we got? We got some people on Facebook, too. Most everybody's on YouTube. But listen, do say hello, trade information. Hey, and bring your questions. Do you have abusive toe questions? What do you need to know? Because we're going to get into it. Man, there's a lot of information. I mean, first, it's different in different states, and then you got to have your rates posted. What's a rotating list? What in the world is a rotating list? Superflow Systems is excited to introduce... DispatchCenter.com, a full-service load board for brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, featuring integrations with Truckify mobile app and iTruckPay. Use Route Scout technology to build your routes. Maximize truck capacity. Stay loaded at the highest available revenue with the least amount of driving miles. Tell us your lanes. Loadification will alert you to new loads posting in your route. Views instant load notifications sent with BookNow features. Search and book loads directly through the Truckify mobile app. Brokers and shippers post your loads to Dispatch Center. Give authorized carriers the opportunity to instantly book your loads. Dispatch Center powers the Truckify mobile app, allowing instant load assignment to the driver. Truckify will send inspection reports, geolocated pickup and delivery photos, BOLs, and invoices back to the broker. Brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, Dispatch Center, and Truckify have what you need to be more profitable every day. Okay, what's up, yo? Thank you guys for staying here. It's Tuesday nights live on Auto Transport Intel. We are going to go into industry news. Let's find out what is happening. Uh, I mean, everybody's reading news all the time. You don't mean you don't need me to tell you the news. But here's what I try to do before I go into that. I try to give a recap of what's happening. You know, I condense it. This is from last Tuesday night until today. So we got the last seven days ish of relevant news in car shipping. Eh, for the most part. I try to stay on track. I try to stay focused, so let's kick it off. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yes, that's right. I tell you this, and I encourage you to do this. This will help me. This will help you. 
This is start a Facebook watch party and watch YouTube on the big screen. You know you can do that. You can watch YouTube on the big screen. The kids love it. Man, the kids love Auto Transport Intel. Hey, your tow bill is outrageous. I'm the only friend you've got. <laughs> Keeping it alive. Cat lady meme strikes again. It's right, it's the Abusive Toe Show. Tonight's show is Abusive Toe, episode 138 with Dan Oliveri. What is he talking about? Honey, what's he talking about, Abusive Toe? I'm telling you, if you don't need to know now, you want to keep it, just keep that in your back pocket for when you need it. You're going to need it. You might need it. Hey, that's an abusive tire, by the way. Is it? Uh, oh, if you're going to the Mannheim, Nevada, you better bring a crowbar. Because those cars are packed in. This is somebody, somebody shared this on Facebook. No joke. I mean, how do you even, how are you going to get your car? I don't know, man. That's abusive. Is it? Uh, let's take a trip back down memory lane. Hey, no way. You can, you can sleep underneath the driver. <laughs> That's not abusive at all. That's such a great eye. That's just a plum great idea. Uh, hey, 1949 Ford's on the Mississippi. That's car hauling. That is, well, it's car shipping. That is car shipping. Uh, which states are reopening? Who cares? Why do we need to know? We're already essential business, right? You are essential. That's right. You're essential. Uh, other than in Illinois and Michigan. I don't know, man. I don't know what it is. I know Detroit, but here's the thing. I know Detroit's in the news because, oh, by the way, Fauci says there's, there ain't no reason to be walking around with a mask. He's really he said that? I can't even believe he said that. Is that real? That's fake news. Uh, let's see. Masks. Oh, he's got a mask on. No mask, no mask, no mask. This is an auto auction. I don't know. They ain't listening to Fauci. Or they are. Hey, speaking of, let's see here. How we doing? Okay, are we flattening the curve? We are I think we're flattening the curve. All right, that looks, you got your W's, right? You got your W's headed downhill. Oh, thank goodness. That's from the John Hopkins tracker. And yep, there it is, industry news. The Detroit three automakers and their suppliers began restarting assembly lines on Monday, yesterday. Wow. Sign on the top of the whatever said, let's restart. A guy said, I'm just trusting in God. Man, craziness. It's real. It's happening. Uh, after two months of inactivity, Volkswagen Chattanooga to restart. And the, the big the big news in the OEMs right now is all about supply chain. Can they get the parts they need from the different locations globally? Uh, return to work signals auto industry recovery to begin. Around 133,000 workers expected to return to work this week. Thousands of dealerships nationwide have started to resume sales. In fact, in New York, which was perhaps the hardest hit, New car dealers are now permitted to have in-person appointment with sales. Man, say it ain't so. People in the showroom? Holy mackerel. Coronavirus pandemic could force supplier consolidation. What in the... In some cases, larger manufacturers might have little choice but to acquire niche players to avoid bringing their supply chains to a halt. I'm telling you, it's all about the supply chain. Blockchain? You thought it didn't matter? Here it is. Comes around, goes around. 33 million Americans have filed for unemployment. Dang. Dude. Insane. Like I need to tell you. That's probably, that number's gone up. Uh, bracing for possible Hertz bankruptcy. You've been hearing this? It's not, we do not want to hear that. You're talking Hertz? To modify its monthly vehicle lease payments and other financial commitments. Growing possibility the rental car company soon will be filing for bankruptcy because of the collapse of the travel industry. Right. Um, shifting gears to the auctions. Going live every Thursday at I-66 Auto Auction. Wow, with real people? That's what should, it should say that. Going live with real people. Actual people. Actual people, actual cars. Not the case at Mannheim Riverside simulcast only. You're going to see that. Some places are simulcast only. You'll find people in other places. Preview inventory. Hey, you can, you can be a person and preview inventory at Houston, Texas Hobby. That's real. Wow, from noon to 6 every Monday and Tuesdays 8 to 1. You can be there. That's cool. Vehicle shopping is returning to pre-COVID-19 levels. 
Now, I've been, I've watched all kinds of webinars, and so if you see your slide up here and you're like, hey, where do you get that? Well, I get it. I just, I watch everything. Anything automotive, I mean, I'm there. Um, so, yeah. So, we are, that's pretty good. That's good. That's good. But the level of recovery in terms of vehicle shopping is different by state. Biggest decline, California in the northeast. Moderate here. Increase. Get your snow flurries and car sales here. Okay. Uh, dealership sales operations. So there you go. You got dealerships. Okay, so online, remote, or appointment only in those states. And no constraints on showroom sales. They probably have, uh, what do you call that, social distancing? They probably have that, though. Do you see this? What, this is today. Trump signs executive order giving federal agencies tremendous power to cut regulations. Do you hear me? Okay, I'm going to start. I would start with the ELD. He says, Elaine, you can do things nobody would believe in your department. All right, I believe it. I believe he's instruct. Oh, here we go. There's more down here. He's instructing federal agencies to slash all unnecessary regulations that impede economic recovery. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Hey, by the way, hey, check it out. Two hundred dollar payment on a fifty thousand dollar car. Absolutely, the exit is over there. <laughs> I love memes. They're just so. Hey, by the way, this is how you get your car shipping news. This is it. This is how you get your car shipping news. Just flip on the old YouTube, put it up on the big screen, and make the popcorn because we are in two. We're 20 minutes into Auto Transport Intel tonight. Consumer preferences, vehicle sanitize, and dis disinfect. I'm telling you, disinfect and shipping, just change the name of the company. And we'll bring it to your house, curbside pickup, desire to pay online. It's all happening. St tell somebody that six months ago. Go ahead, get in, get in your time machine. Go back six months and show them that graph. They would laugh you out of the building. Automotive search intent is up. That's good too. That is really good. Oh, thank goodness, man. Yeah. Uh, retail trend estimate on its way up. Look at that. That is good stuff. Uh, consistent recovery all around. So, I mean, graph after graph, right? And that's why we show so many graphs. So we can, we can, but here's this interesting. There's a disconnect between retail and wholesale. Look, wholesale, right? Slowly creeping up, retail slowly dropping. That's really interesting. Very, very interesting. That's a Cox Automotive. Do check into Cox Auto Inc. Check into their webinars and stuff. Here we go. Day supply. Now, this is good news too. Because, um, and it, it, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 I feel like I got to see it to believe it. Because I know there's a lot of news. The inventory has gone crazy. And, and I think this is why there's a disparity between retail and wholesale. Because they're talking about the new car inventories. It's going to be soon before there's a gap where there's higher demand. Demand's going to exceed supply on new cars. At some point, that's going to happen. Whereas on used cars, at least the values are going back up. But, I mean, really high inventory on, uh, on both of those right now. Much higher on used. And here we go. If you're going to buy a new car and you see those incentives, better, better get to shopping because those incentives are coming down. Um, as the supply comes down, so do the incentives. Service, pickup, and delivery. There's been a lot of talk about... Uh, they actually, what's interesting is service. They thought service and home delivery pickup and delivery of service and repair that would be much higher. And actually, it wasn't as high as they expected. Um, but again, at home, everything is at home. Stay home, get it at home, picked up at home, delivered at home. And you're going to need good technology to make sure all that's happening. This is the dealership conversation to schedule it online and then get documents online. And then make sure you've got pickup and delivery online. Ooh, and do your vid video walk around online. That's right. That's why we did that quick page video app show. Quick page. Have you not checked out? Oh, you haven't checked out quickpage.io? Well, stop your grinning and drop your linen because you need quick page. And then, of course, you want to sign your contract online. It's all online now. It's just sitting on the couch, getting cars. How has buying a car changed the pandemic? I think I just, I think I just said it. Your car will be delivered, even for a test drive. So who's doing all that, by the way? 
Is it the delivery guy? Is it is it the dealership? Is it an Uber guy? Who's driving these cars? I don't know. I wonder if there's a business model in there somewhere. A uh, silver car by Audi initiative brings contactless rental delivery. Man, I'm telling you, all these cars got to get picked up and delivered. Who's moving all these cars? God, I just wonder. Hey, do you need an automotive webinar recap? Email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I'll recap it. Shoot ya. Um, oh, right. Dot Audit finds $4.25 billion diverted. Oh, okay, so now we're going to go into the bad news. So I'll tell you what. As we go into the bad news, get your ELD punch. Mmm. Tasty. And I'll tell you what, we're going to be right back. I want to thank Assertus for being a part of the show. Uh, if you're looking for Assertus, they do a lot. They do vehicle transport, title and registration, vehicle storage, vehicle care, last mile and compliance. If you need a robust solution, you're a fleet management company or a dealership or an auto auction, you need a big company to help you. You need Assertus. Assertus does that. They do all those things. Visit AssertusDelivers.com. You'll be glad you did. Let's go into industry news. Let's go back for part two. Let's get back. Did everybody... Oh, hey, man. The screen's freaking out over there. Uh, speaking of freaking out. Okay. Looking for dispatch. Now, my guess is that whoever posted this on Facebook, they, their arm was not being twisted. But you wouldn't know that. Uh, because dispatch services are illegal brokers. I send lists to the FMCSA regularly. Big fines for all involved. Michael Culler, there he is, says, I respect you. You know I do, but I disagree. And in, in, in talking about uh, James Lamb and then Ziggy says, well, I understand that you disagree. However, the FMCSA defines it and enforces it. Oh, isn't it so great to be a dispatcher? Man, being a custodian is tough. It is tough being a custodian. Uh, but here it says, what about a dispatch service that charges 12% to find you a load? This guy says it's highway robbery. Well, if you agree to 12%, and I mean, and they're doing a good job, and they're able to, maybe they do such a good job that you could pay them 15%. I don't know, man. Who comes up with these rates? The companies with the loads, listen. You know as a carrier, it's hard to stay loaded. You're dealing with brokers and dispatchers and shippers and ELD and DOT and everything else. That's why we go live with Dispatching Live every Thursday uh, don't miss it. May 21st, this Thursday at noon, we're going to be live. That is Jay at Auto Transport Intel and Sue at Murphy Auto Transport. Show's doing pretty well. Pretty excited about it. Hope you can join us. Please do. Uh, we're going to do stuff like this. Oh, say it ain't so. You mean 33? Look at that. 33 cents a mile. Now, this is interesting. Look at this. You got Missouri. Okay, Columbia to, or let's just say Missouri to Little Rock. Missouri to Little Rock, Missouri to Little Rock. Okay, 33 cents a mile, 69 cents a mile, 89 cents a mile. And the car's paying, okay, the car's shouldn't be paying just half. Something's going on here. That's the kind of stuff we talk about it. Oh, dispatcher versus broker? Really? Hey, this guy says, I never thought in my life I'd hate being a broker. This is from Facebook. Customers look at me like I'm a, and quoting a buck six is being destroyed by greed seems like an impossible feat who knows prove me wrong the guy says he hates being a broker i understand it well there is a lot of conversation about brokers and dispatchers did you guys see this story brokers group backlash so tia and oida in fisticuffs here let's go into this story brokers association lashes out um now this is pretty interesting oida informed Congress that brokers are skirting transparency regulations by waiving those requirements in contracts. And that's at the core of this issue. There seems to be many other issues. But there was recently, it was a video posted by TIA and talked about how, you know, brokers aren't the problem. It's the market. It's the rates. Well, you know, we all are fans of transparency, right? For the most part. So here are a couple. This is was shared in the article. You can go to OI to read more about it. But this is the letter to owner-operators, and this is the letter to motor carriers. And it's a little bit different because the letter to owner-operators says, unfortunately, you're not a part of the transaction. While you may have hauled the load, you don't get to know as much as the motor carrier that 
booked the load? I don't know actually what the difference is here. It is really interesting. So then they we go in further into the article. Uh, I like how this... Okay, so OIDA points this out. Please feel free to make arrangements to come to our office. This is what the, the TIA says. You can... The, representing the brokers, feel free to come to the office during regular business hours to review the records. Oh, wait a minute. This is to a care... A carrier's being told, if you want to see the records, go ahead and come to the office. Real, essentially, that makes access to information virtually impossible for most owner operators and carriers. And I'll tell you what, listen, if you're a carrier right now and you're bored by this and you just want to talk about dispatchers are illegal, let me tell you, you definitely want to check into what's going on with the brokers. Because I'm not exactly sure calling dispatchers illegal brokers is going to get you to point B. There is a lot of information here. That's why I'm going into it. Here we go. Let's go into 49 CFR 371.3. Roker, re, rokers. Records to be kept by brokers. And it's in here. The amount of compensation received by the broker. The amount of any freight charges collected by the broker. Each party to a broker transaction has the right to review the record of transaction. Nowhere in here did I mention dispatchers. The problem is not the dispatcher here. It's the broker that doesn't want to be transparent. In addition, nothing in the statute or regulation requires you to send the information. You're only required to make the records available for view. This means you can make the information available in your office during business hours. Forget that guy. He doesn't, he, he's not entitled to an easy way to view the transaction. Very interesting. Very interesting stuff. It goes on and then there's some talk about communism and... <laughs> Oh, I'm telling you, if you missed, hey, if you missed my broker versus dispatcher show. Now, switching gears, I'm still talking about brokers, but James Lamb, if you missed the show with James Lamb a couple weeks ago, broker versus dispatcher, it's in three parts. It's the good, it's the bad, it's the ugly. You want to watch, go ahead and check out the ugly. In fact, I made a video edit of talking about what what's the law and and I, I appreciate james coming on the show and talking i mean there's a lot of interesting information here um in fact this is a you want to pay attention to what james is saying because he sent a cease and desist letter to somebody that made def defamatory and false statements about him um i point this out because this stuff is real serious you want to check out these videos i'm not kidding you go to auto transport intel on youtube the good the bad the ugly I recommend the ugly uh, with a side of fries. Uh, what else we got? Oh, here's some more broker documentation. I agree to deliver the vehicles before 8.30 p.m. unless otherwise agreed. If the carrier fails to comply with this, 200 bucks. That's a broker document. That's I, I said, I've said nothing about dispatching illegal dispatchers in the last couple minutes. That was something I read. I've only been talking about brokers and language. There's a lot there. So I'm not sure if you should be so upset with the dispatchers. You might want to focus on the brokers and then the illegal carriers that pretend to be brokers. How about that? Recently, we have seen we have seen an influx of cases. Uh, oh, this is a reindeer notice. Um, this is $150. If you pick up the car early and you don't notify reindeer, $150. Is it unreasonable? I'm not saying it is. But I'm saying, you know, there's a lot of written stuff. And uh, it is getting pretty serious. If I'm trying to get my vehicle shipped going on two months now, am I only allowed to contact one broker to get it shipped? This guy was led to believe he can only talk to one broker. Again, I don't know if an illegal dispatcher had anything to do with it. How am I doing, Michael? <laughs> uh, hey, by the way, if you want to talk about, let's switch gears a little bit. If you want to just learn about trucking brokering, trucking dispatching, and trucking companies, Go check out uh, ShaggyExpress.com. Shaggy's got a boot camp. Check that out. Highly recommend it. York Truck Driving School here is from people looking to make a career change. Check this out. Uh, we have forklift drivers calling us, warehouse workers, housewives, singles moms. Single moms. We've had computer analysts. Everybody wants to get into trucking. Wow, watch the Facebook comments fly off the handle. Uh, NBS Transportation LLC has a great opportunity for a car hauler. So, hey, there's a couple phone numbers. Give them a call. Let's, I'll make that larger. Looking for a car hauling job? Call those phone numbers. Give it a shot. What else we got here? Uh, market yourself. Hey, Chris Padilla of Texas Auto Logistics. This is on LinkedIn. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Somebody's been doing their homework. 
Good job, Chris. That's looking good, man. Keep doing it, dude. And keep us posted. I want you to stay loaded, man. Hey, speaking of, are you a carrier and you are looking for a better way to connect with the shipper? You're tired of all this broker and illegal and all this talk? Dude, talk to Market Superflow. Find out how you can get your auto quote in Alexa. So the next time a customer goes to Alexa, you know voice search is up. It is. It's up big time. You already know online car buying search is up. That's the tech stuff. The voice is next. It's going to go crazy. Get in the system. Talk to Mark. Find out how. In fact, here's another one. I keep saying it. There's a news story. Chesterfield Car Hauler revs up $5 million in capital raise to build a home delivery service. There it is. Sweetie Boy Delivers. Delivers cars to customers on behalf of auto dealerships across the country. Owner Tyler McCormick. I'm telling you, I keep saying, man, who's going to move all those cars? I wonder. I don't know. Can't figure it out. It's the Carvana Experience. Brought to every brick and mortar dealer, says McCormick. Sweetie Boy's capital raise will be used to build out software and infrastructure to support the delivery service. Hey, we might be able to save you money on software. 10 to 15 trucks for delivery in the Virginia market. Sweetie Boy is seeking angel investors, venture capitalists, aims to deliver 100,000 cars in the first six months. I think I saw some position openings on LinkedIn. Speaking of, hey, are you looking for a job that allows you to set your own schedule? Assert us. They got a virtual recruit, recruitment event May 27th at 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 p.m. Central. It's on a Wednesday. Check it out, man. What is that? That's next Wednesday, dude. Um, and hey, remember this here. Just in case you don't know. If you're, if you're going to do any home delivery, six feet, mask and gloves, no handshaking, wash your hands, Spray or wipe the key. Spray or wipe the door handle. Spray or wipe the steering wheel. And don't get a signature. Just write COVID-19. Something like that. Um, we talk about those things on the state of car hauling. Yes, state of car hauling. Oh, shoot. That's right. I was going to go live at noon. I don't do Wednesdays anymore. Man, can't believe I just realized that live. So I go live Mondays and Fridays on state of car hauling. Actually, tomorrow... You know what tomorrow is? Let's see here. Let's download this. Where's the graphic at? Uh, the, it's the two-minute drill down. Here we go. Can you see that? Let's see. There we go. It's the two-minute drill down. I am now co-hosting on Wednesdays uh, with Ryan Girardi. We are live on autoconversion.net. Um, Ryan, do me a favor. Put the put the link in the live chat for that show the two minute drill down we do some uh we do some questions i'm on the siren i'm the co-host and tomorrow we have Richard and terry lancaster and it's news analysis and opinions that's going to be a great show thank you so much for getting that over to me on time there ryan man we are really building something oh hey another assertive slide traditionally oems work with large asset-based carriers but they're missing out so assertus can help with those larger fleets. But look at that. 89% is one to five truck fleets. They help them all. So check that out. And hey, in case you missed it, we had uh, we had Craig Clayton with Vehicle, which is an Assertus company on the show. Uh, posted the video edit. That came out great. Thank you so much, Craig, for being live on the show. And this is the kind of news I do want to get back to. I know it's been a lot of doom and gloom and who's illegal and who's going to get sued. And unfortunately, Dyson, man, I really wanted to see the Dyson electric car. Um, you know, it's a heck of a vacuum cleaner. Just think what he could do with a car. Hey, how much do you like regulations? You love this stuff? Well, you're going to love this show tonight. This is just a uh, just a page from fees charged for non-consensual towing in Georgia. Any record service shall not charge more than the maximum in the non-consensual towing maximum rate tariff etc at all hear ye hear ye i'm telling you there's going to be so much technical talk tonight you just might pick something up rich from pfa he is going to be in our panel thank you rich if you haven't seen rich's interview on auto transport intel check out pfa company interview also brendan from accident plan is with us uh we did a show what's after the crash accident plan you're going to want to be prepared and that's right, they're in the panel because tonight's show is Abusive Toe with Dan Oliveri 
uh, abusive tow authority. It's really going to be amazing. This is the Car Shipping Business Channel. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. So, by the way, hey, Candy. Candy sent Candy from Jack Sport Storage. You sent me an email earlier uh, that you had some questions and that you want me. I think you want me to read them tonight. I don't think I have a copy of that. I hope you're in the live chat. And that goes for you too. Listen, if you have a question, please do live chat it. Um, if you've had, if you've got a nightmare towing story, we want to hear from you. I'm actually looking in the, uh, oh, Bill Nichols says, he's not the Tiger King, he's the Transport King. Thanks for tuning in, Bill. Good to see you. Um, let's see, anybody else that I missed here? Oh, you know what I need to also do? Let's go check out Facebook um let's see here bear with me i'm going to scroll down and we're going to be we're going to get to the interview in just a few minutes here uh i'm on the cts facebook page oh and there's me talking and then what about the ati facebook page i know almost everybody goes to the youtube channel oh there oh there was the music hey awesome so brendan said hello on the ati facebook page Lee Jones is here. What's up, Lee Jones? How you doing? Thanks for the double thumbs up. I do appreciate it. At least I hope that's what it was. Uh, yeah, buddy, says William Nickel. Listen, man, seriously, guys, I know that abusive toe is a niche topic, um, but it's, you know, this shows many things. We go into niche topics. We have experts and advertisers and interviews and panels. We say hello, and we're also alive. We're I'm happy you guys are here with me. You're live. I know you could be anywhere, but you're here with me. I really do appreciate it. So let's do this. Let's get ready for the Zoom interview. Dan, go ahead and get your Zoom meeting invite ready to go because you're going to be with me here in a minute. So here comes this. This is the ATA video promo. This is Dan Oliveri from Abusive Toe Authority, and we're going to be right back with Dan. Stick around. My name is Dan Oliveri. I'm a senior partner at Morgan Cohen and Bach, and I'm one of the founders of the Abuse of Tow Authority, the ATA, uh, a division of MCB or Morgan Cohen and Bach. The ATA's main mission is to protect the transportation industry from abusive tow companies and the tow industry as a whole. Unfortunately, the tow industry has been able to successfully rob the transportation industry. I'm talking brokers, I'm talking carriers, I'm talking insurance companies for hundreds of millions of dollars over the last four decades and we intend on putting a stop to this. We intend on shutting this down and stopping the transportation industry from having to deal with this constant abuse. All right, I see the, uh, I already see conversations going back and forth. That's right, Mark, send him an email. Come on, Mark. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so Dan's going to be here in a second. That is Dan. And by the way, if you heard that double vision audio on the top of that spot, that was my fault. But you know, uh, when you have an echo, you have that command, extra level of commanding authority. So, and he's not going to need it. Dan is, uh, I believe that Dan is an attorney and uh, he knows his stuff. If you have a question, I mean, we're really lucky to have him joining us here in a second. Um, and I've, I've only talked to Dan a few times cause he's a busy guy. So having him on the show tonight, this will probably be the longest conversation we'll ever have where he's not charging me. So how cool is that? Hey, there's the doorbell. Uh, okay. So Dan is joining us. All right. So Dan, can you see me? Can you hear me? And he's checking in, all right. So this is normal. This is a normal part of this show where everybody's getting their settings right. We can see him. He's going to be able to hear me in a second. And you know what I could really use, because I'm always talking, is some ELD punch. Mm -mm -mm. All right, Jay, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Welcome to the show. That was pretty, uh, that was pretty smooth. That's my uh, first time on a uh, Zoom meeting. I usually do Google Meet, so... Well, I, well, and we that's right. We did a Google Meet video test. And so, listen, I appreciate it. And, um, yeah, like butter. No problem at all. Well, I think you just probably converted me. So I think you just stole me from Google. And I think I'm flipping to Zoom. Whoa. Somebody <laughs> somebody tell somebody at Zoom. That's great news, man. There you go. There you go. That's so, awesome. All right, well, welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself and let people know what's going on with Abusive Toe Authority. Okay, so uh, my name is Dan Olivieri, and uh, I'm a senior partner here at uh, Morgan Cohen and & Bach, and 
uh, like the Roland said, I'm, I'm one of the founders of the ATA, the Abusive Tow Authority. And what we do is uh, essentially the, the Abusive Tow Authority goes in on uh, inflated tow bills or abusive tow practices. Um, typically, we're called in when uh, there's an accident on the road. A semi truck is usually uh, picked up or um, sometimes it's a, it's a flatbed. A uh, tow company goes out, does the cleanup. Uh, does the recovery and then of course um, once they have the equipment the cargo uh, they submit a bill and usually that bill is inflated you know 50 60 70 80 100 I've seen them as high as 180 190 thousand dollars um, and what we do is we basically go in with our team we reconstruct the bill so we have a unit um, of individuals that all worked in the tow industry they're our analysts and they basically pretend as if they were out there uh, doing the tow on th themselves and they reconstruct the, the scene and they take the pictures and all of that. And, and then what we do is we go back in with either our mediators or attorneys, depending on uh, how severe the situation is. And we start negotiating the bill and, and attempting to get it resolved amicably if possible. And then, of course, um, if they tell us to jump in a lake, then, you know, we get wet and uh to court we go so that's uh that's that's what the ata does and and we've been uh, fighting this fight for about say about strong five six years now and uh have been able to successfully save uh insurance companies millions of dollars and and you know get carriers their equipment and cargo back successfully and and it's really uh, one of our one of our passions and one of the things i've really fallen in love with it wasn't my it wasn't my we kind of fell into this on accident um, but it's starting to consume me for sure. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah, actually, so I was doing my homework and I watched you've on LinkedIn, you've, you've shared a few videos on LinkedIn. And then I was also watching, um, there was a video about Wyoming. Yep. Right. And it's, it's re it is a really interesting topic. And it went and listening to you, um, give the introduction there too. There's a lot of, there's a lot to unpack. I mean, number one. I'm assuming that without an organization like yours, you've got carriers that are just, I mean, they, they're just going to do what they're told to do. I mean, does, how does that go down? I mean, before you created Abusive Tow Authority or, or represented, did you create this? Well, let me, let me tell you, let me, yeah, I do. We, we actually did create, I'll tell you the story so you can kind of put it in context. Yeah. So I actually, I started off, um, originally optimizing and protecting companies' accounts receivable. So Morgan Cohen & Bach is a commercial mediation litigation firm. Um, I own a private investigation company called Ridgeline Investigations. And what we used to do, or what we originally do, and we still do it, it's still a big part of our business, is we would help companies that had issues with accounts receivable departments. Some, sometimes it was going in there educating, sometimes it was consulting, sometimes it was reconstructing. Um, and then we would do everything, uh, you know, we would do the heavy lifting on the back end. So we would do the mediation if we needed to uh, do mediation. We would, you know, file suit, uh, freeze bank counseling, property, intercept income, you know, the whole shebang. And what ended up happening was we started representing a lot of uh, brokers and carriers in the transportation industry. And we did subrogation as well. So we worked in, in, with insurance companies as well, uh, subrogating claims and things of that nature. And what started to happen was we figured out that through our mediation, we could actually mitigate a loss by helping um, uh, orchestrate salvage. So what we started to do was team up with some salvage companies and uh, in the mid middle of mediating claims or mediating a debt or, or trying to deal with a contractual breach, uh, we would we would kind of orchestrate these salvages to drop the bills and, and make things a little easier and kind of come up with an amicable solution for everybody involved. And if you're in salvage, in the transportation industry, it's not long before you freaking meet a tow company, right? So it is a fact is uh, we were in a situation where I remember the first time uh, we did a salvage. We're new to salvage. You know, we don't we don't really know what we're doing. We're just kind of setting it all up. And and we had some successful ones happen and, and it was all good. And then all of a sudden we had a buyer uh, come in. And this is about this is probably about five, six years ago, uh, had a buyer come in, purchased a load, showed up to the tow company and then ended up reaching out to us saying, hey, they don't. They don't want to release the, the cargo. And I'm sitting here thinking like, you know, I, you know, I went and checked statute and, I, and, I'm, and I'm looking through it. And I'm like, OK, well, they can't hold the cargo because the cargo's not, 
you know, there, just like if you got in a, if, you know, if your, if your vehicle got towed and your, you know, your, your baby sitting in the vehicle, they can't keep your baby. They can't keep your, your stuff inside the, the vehicle. They have to release it. Right. So, uh, you know, I think it's just a mistake. I pick up the phone and have a conversation with the tow company. Um, tow company's adamant that nothing's getting released. Right. It's all it's staying here until this bill gets paid. If you want if you want the cargo, you can stroke the check. The carrier can stroke the check. The insurance company can stroke the check. Whoever's going to stroke the check, that's fine. <laughs> but I'm not releasing it. Right. So I take a step back and I realize, you know, it doesn't take me long to figure out I'm in a fight. So I gear up, uh, you know, I have uh, in my network, I control a network of 173 attorneys spread across the country. So I get the attorney that's in the venue and, and you know, we get a private investigator uh, looking at it and, you know, we attack. It takes them about four hours to change their mind and release the cargo. Wow. So they do it. Um, insurance company reaches out to us and, and uh, you know, praising us for, for getting it done. And, I, and, I, and I'm not thinking anything of it. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I could help. I didn't charge them anything. I'm just glad that the cargo got sold and everything's done. We move on. About two weeks later, I get a phone call like in the middle of the night by uh, someone in my office saying, hey, we had another load get stuck, you know, stuck at a tow company. They're not releasing the cargo i'm sitting here thinking like is this a thing because i because i had no idea like i'm like so these guys just i guess everybody went to the same school everybody just you know learned the same the same tricks we'll come to find out they actually did go to the same schools and uh there's actually schools and attorneys out there teaching people how to do these uh, how to teach tow companies how to do this and do it successfully so we go back in and, and start uh you know, we do the same situation, get it released again. And at f I start, I just, I figure out that I'm going to need a team in house that's going to do this all day. Cause I can't, I can't, you know, you know, leave my family in the middle of the night and all this different stuff to be doing this every five seconds. So we start gearing up a team and originally it was designed just for ourselves. Right. So we built like a non-consensual tow team. I brought in a guy that um, second generation tow owner, uh, we built, we started kind of uh, training the attorneys and like how to have the conversation, so on and so forth. And we just, we just started doing it for our own personal use. And then eventually, um, you know, people started hearing about it through word of mouth. And next thing you know, we started getting, you know, five toes and then it was 10 toes a week and then it was 20 toes a week and it was 30. And next thing you know, it just became, it just became, started consuming the business. Wow. Um, so much so that there's been years where I've been kind of afraid to market it just because it catches fire so fast and to scale it, it's, it's, wow. it's kind of difficult sometimes. Um, but anyway, so that's, that's, uh, um, I can't remember your original question. But no, but that, I love that. Uh, that's how it all started. That was, a, that was the answer I was looking for. I mean, that is, that's an awesome history. I mean, it's, you know, it's not awesome, right? That. It, you know, but the thing is that, and that's kind of what I was getting at. I know here you are, you're in a situation and the tow, the tow company is a great, a great example of a situation where as, as just a participant, you begin to feel like a victim because right. you don't have any options. I mean, I've had my car towed and that was just my car. Uh, <laughs> right. And I didn't do anything wrong. I was parked in the wrong place. Right. And I didn't realize it. I, I didn't realize it. Actually, I've been towed a couple times. Yeah. Um, and it's horrible. And, and, and you are, I mean, there was, there was a junkyard dog on a chain and a fence and angry people. It was exactly the way you, you think. And if you're, you're, if you're a driver and you're, it was your, your truck was in an accident, that's already a problem. You're broken right. down. You already have problems. Yep. Now you have a new problem yeah. and yeah. an abusive problem. That's just terrible. Well, and it's a perfect storm for the for the tow company because when you're when you're looking at transportation, you know, transportation is such a, um, you know, it's really it's really such a beautiful thing. I, I mean, I'm starting to have, you know, I have such a you know I've, I've fallen in love with it over the years. But the the how you know there's so many moving pieces, right? You have the oh, yeah. you have shipper, you have the receiver, you have the broker, you have the carrier, you have the insurance company on the tr on the tractor, you have the insurance company on the trailer, you have the cargo insurance company. Sometimes you know you you get lucky and they're all under the same umbrella. Sometimes it's three different insurance companies. Plus you got to deal with the insurance company of the other drivers that were involved in the accident. So you end up in these scenarios where there's there's these um, there's there's five, six, seven, eight parties involved. And the tow companies have figured out that basically all they have to do is they just have to lock everything up, right? So they lock up the cargo, they lock up the truck, they lock up the trailer. And then what starts to happen is all of the parties involved start to turn in on themselves, 
right? So right. the broker's pissed at the carrier, the carrier's pissed at the broker, the carrier's upset with the adjuster because the adjuster's not, you know, getting getting the stuff released and released at a, you know at a reasonable time. The adjuster's trying to mitigate loss and not, you know, not pay a eighty thousand dollar bill on something that should be thirty grand because they get crazy. Right. And the tow company just kind of sits there and just keeps, you know, pushing the buttons and getting everybody, getting everybody, getting everybody and moving. Then and then the, and then the, uh, the solution that's always uh, offered is, of course, you know, just pay the bill. I mean, if we could, this can all go away if we just pay the bill. Right. And it becomes almost this racket. Um, and, and a lot of the times for an adjuster sitting there, especially on the insurance side, it, it, it is easier just to cut the cut the check. But what starts to happen is the insurance companies, you know, they, they start losing money hand over fist on this. And then it comes and then it trickles down. Right. Because now premiums go up for the carriers and then just it, it's just a trickle down effect. Um, and it's become such a culture. You know, we're talking about decades. Right. I mean, some of these these tow companies have been doing this two, three generations. Right. I mean, they they see a semi truck commercial accident happen. They make up their whole quarter on that one deal. You know, it's again. Uh-huh. These bills come in 60, 70, 80, 90,000. We just had one that we just mitigated. It's it started off at 130 grand. By the time we were done, it was 40. Wow. How much inflation we're talking about. And wow. for carriers, I've literally seen tow companies wipe carriers off the map. Because what happens, your owner operator, you got one rig, you're done. Oh yeah. You're no. done. No. You're done. A set of tires is painful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the insurance comp you know, when you get into insurance again, you know, it's like you, you have to, you know, you got to you, you have to make sure that you're getting with the right insurance professionals and make sure that you're covered on the right tow policies and all these things. Because, you know, if you don't have the right policy in place, you end up in a situation where you're a carrier and all of a sudden, you know, you have to pay, you know, half the bill or the insurance doesn't cover it all. And, and these and, and then and then don't get, get me started on the liens. You know, they they there's a there's a time limit on it, which makes it even easier and better for the tow company, because, in, you know, in some states they, they can file for uh, their prelim almost immediately, which basically allows them to sell your stuff. So the pressure's on immediately. It, well, and I think you were saying in the Wyoming show that I watched that the tow company, as long as they post their rates, they can charge whatever they want or, or something yeah, like that. So, so here, so here's the thing: is every state. So one of the main issues is is that, you know, non-consensual tow is not regulated on a federal level. So what happens is you're dealing with state. Uh, it's a state by state um, scenario where each state kind of makes their own rules, makes their own laws, and some states it it, it, it it's different sometimes from venue to venue so you can go from county to county and it's different wow so so what ends up happening is the reason why this is it's like you're always on a moving target right the foundation is always shifting because if you're moving loads from state to state it's very hard to know you know you you might know everything there is to know about something in california and then our toes in california and then get to texas you're in a completely different place so in wyoming's prime example is wyoming's like the wild wild west right so in wyoming um, on that particular show you're talking about, they're required to, to submit a rate sheet. And the rate sheet is basically when they win the bid for the, for the uh, you know, with, with the police department. The police department um, tells them to submit a rate sheet. And they can submit the rate sheet, and it could be whatever cost they, they want it to be, as long as it's submitted originally in the original rate sheet. So if they, if they charge five times the amount for equipment, as long as they put it on that rate sheet, it's fair game. Right. So like in Wyoming, the tow companies that are on the rotation list, they actually start building inflation in before they even see a tow on the rotation. Yeah, right. It's just it, again, it goes back to the culture. Wow. And then you have you have other states and other venues that are really strict on it. And you have states that are in the middle trying to trying to get better, you know, trying to get better at it. But the tough part is that it's non consensual. Right. So you don't have a choice. You don't have an option. You can't talk about rates before it happens. When the accident occurs. Yeah, right. The police department make the phone call. The tow company goes out there, and you're stuck with whatever it's going to be. And, and that's the thing: is a rotation list is a list of tow companies, and the police department just calls the next tow company on the list, and the list just keeps going around in a circle, right? Yep, yep. And some, so, and some, in some places, there's only one tow company on the list, right? So right. it depends on it depends on where you're at, how big the, how big the county is, how big the territory is. But um, the the police department just have a list, and they pick up the phone, they make a call, and and the police. Um, main concern is of course safety right so they're not really they don't care about the bill they don't care about anything being locked up they want everything moved off the road as safely as possible and that's their main focus 
And again, and the driver, you mentioned it earlier, you know, the driver's in an accident. You know, this is already a dramatic situation. Um, it's already intense. And a lot of times what happens is the drivers are not educated on what they need to do proactively to protect themselves from this abuse, like pull out your camera, look at how many people are right. out. And I'll, and I'll give you some examples of like some points of inflation so you can kind of see how they do, how some, some of these guys do this. It's like, for instance, um, one, of our, one of our most common ones is, you know, uh, they send out their whole fleet, right? So they get a call, it's, it's something that maybe needs a low boy um, and, and maybe a couple of guys, they send 10 guys out there, they send four rotators out there, they send three low boys out there and, and, and all the equipment sitting on the side of the road, but you're getting charged $1,200 an hour on a rotator, right? For all that stuff. And they're, and they're, and, and you, and times five, right? So, so, and then of course their, their rebuttal to that is, you know, we had, we didn't know what we were getting into. So we just dispatched everything to make sure everybody was safe. Or another one that we see is, um, you know, building in administration costs where they're, they're charging, you know, $10,000 in admin costs, $5,000 in admin costs, which when you ask them to define what that is, there is no definition of it. Another way that they do it is they'll, they'll take a, they'll, they'll charge by weight. So you can't really dispute the individual items because it's just if the if the rig weighed this much, this is how much it costs, and it turns out being three times the amount of money that it should cost for the bill. So they just they, they you know every state's a little different, and every tow company has their own strategy on how to do this. Um, but but that's kind of how they they slip it in, and then again you know everybody's they they lock up the, the equipment, the cargo, and the and uh, and everything else involved in. And what ends up happening is usually the pressure just gets too high and someone eventually pays the bill. And that's that's how it usually works, unless someone calls someone like myself. Well, and so and, and I was just going to say, so who ends up calling you? Is that the insurance company? We, we represent um, we represent anybody that has an interest in the release. Right. Or or the or the, the decrease of the bill. So uh, we represent a lot of insurance companies. Um, we have a lot of uh, insurance brokers. We, we have a lot of brokers um, as far as uh, the carriers go. We have carriers. Um, you know, we represent pretty much anybody. I mean, our fight is with the tow companies and wherever inflation is. Uh, one, you know, one of the things that we, we always tell people is, you know, we, we tell you the way our service works is you reach out to us. You submit uh, the, it's the information. You go onto our website and you submit a, you submit a form with some details. Within an hour, um, our tow analyst team has uh, rebuilt the the the, uh, the scene, and they they get back to you and tell you you know based on the regulation in that particular venue, based on the, the information you gave us, um, whether we believe that the bill is inflated or not, and then. Mm. We get that information. It's free. You know, we don't charge anyone for that. Nice. If they want to deploy us and have us get involved with it. Um, then we then we step in and we start our no- negotiation. We initiate contact with the tow company. They all, I mean, you know, pretty much all of them know us by now. But um, we initiate contact and uh, we start trying to get it resolved. Usually, you know, we're successful. Right now, we're, we have uh, we just did some stats where we had a 93% all-time success rate. So 93% of the time since the beginning, um, we're talking now thousands of claims uh, where we've been able to successfully get a reduction and get the the release of the truck trailer and cargo expedited. Um, so that's that's pretty much how it works. Wow. Uh, so you talked about not a lot of advertising. So if you're let's say you're in Wyoming, let's say you're that one truck Charlie. Yep. And, and, you know, now you have a problem and yep, your number came up with the wrong company. They've, they've got your stuff. They're charging an outrageous number, but you don't know you, let's say you're that, you're that company owner. You have no idea where to go. How would you, how do they find you? What do they do? You know, I don't know. Are they going to Google abusive toe? What happens? If you, if you Google abusive toe or inflated toe bill or non-consensual toe or anything like that, we're popping up where, I mean, we're, we're one, one of the, we're the first, if not one of the first on Google. Um, but you can go to, um, I encourage everybody to go to our LinkedIn pages. We have uh, uh, three, three setups on, on LinkedIn um, right now. So we have an ATA page, which is basically our education page. And it's a page that we just launched a couple of weeks ago. And we're basically going to go state by state on that, on that, uh, on that page. And we're just going to break every single state down. So we want to make it kind of like a catalog uh, as well as our YouTube page where people can go in and, and, you know, have an issue in a state, you know, go onto YouTube, go onto LinkedIn and watch the video and get a complete breakdown of what they need to do in that state, what the most common inflation is, so on and so forth. 
The other thing we have is a live ATA group that we also just launched. And the purpose of the ATA group is going to be um, just, a, just a forum where everybody can kind of go on, uh, tell their story, talk about whatever issue they're running into. If they're running into a live issue right then and there, they can talk about you know the issues, upload a bill right there on LinkedIn. We're gonna have um, our director of mediation uh, sit in that group and basically answer questions all day long. He's already doing it. Um, and then we have a hotline, again, all free, you know, so if you if you want to, you know, have a, someone talk to you about it and you're in a, in a live situation, you can actually have a conversation. Even if you're in the middle of an accident, um, you know, you can pick up and I'll send you all this information to uh, all the links. I'll have Myra send it over to you. But um, where you can pick up the phone, call us and we'll walk you through how to protect yourself proactively. We'll walk you through what you need to do. And, and the idea is just to kind of get everybody educated and, and uh, you know, protected if, if we can by just, you know, putting them in. Yeah, there you go. I saw, yeah, I saw this. They, they, okay, so this is, you've got. Yeah. Okay, so you've yeah. got, yep. Uh, yeah. Okay, links for every state and phone numbers. Yeah. Wow. So that's your, that's your, so we have a, re, we have a whole resource page. We have all kinds of stuff wow, that's um, awesome. uh, up there, but, but yeah, as you, um, so yeah, so that's the way they can reach out Morgan Cohen and Bach.com. You can, you can, uh, go there and click on the non-consensual tow tab and, and it walks you through how to submit a form. Um, we also, uh, you know, where we have an email list. If you want to join our email list, you can do that from the website as well, where we're constantly, uh, sending out emails and, and, uh, bulletins and things of that nature. Um, all right, so we talked about, we mentioned Wyoming, we mentioned some other topics. I know on your, uh, on, and we're going to bring in uh, Rich and Brendan shortly, but before we do, it seemed like you had other areas of information. I mean, okay, so we've talked about, and, and Michael Culler, he mentioned New Mexico. What would be some other states or areas or counties where you recommend not to crash? <laughs> Virginia is definitely one. I would, I would, I would, uh, Virginia is becoming a, uh, a thorn for us for sure. Really? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're tough. And, and Virginia is one where we struggle with the regulatory body. So one of our, um, one of our, either our ally, one of our biggest allies or biggest enemies is the regulatory body, depending on what our past encounters were. So one of the things that we learned earlier, early on was, um, Although there's regulatory bodies in most of these states, they not all of them are good, right? So, so they're you know it's usually someone on the police department, and some states really some oh. states yeah some states really uh, you know take care of the community and others just they don't really they just don't really care. So, unfortunately, we've had to go above the regulatory body several times and light fires with politicians and things wow. of that nature. And when you start going that far, um, you know, you gain some, uh, some not so close friends. So we've had, we have some not so close friends in the, in, in some of these places and, and Virginia is one of those, one of those places. Um, wow. I would say, for, I would say Virginia, I would say another one is, uh, you know, Connecticut, Connecticut's another one. Um, mm. uh, some places in California, you get into Southern California, um, you get into you get into certain uh, spaces where you just don't have that cooperation uh, with the with the regulatory body. And if the tow company feels like the regulatory body is an ally of theirs, it just makes things that much harder. And for us, we try not to lock people up in court. So 90, yeah. I would say 95, 96 percent of our cases um, are resolved out of court. And we're ready to go to court if we need to go through litigation and we need to file suit and we need to file writ of replevlin and and you know do all of that. We're we're equipped for that. We're ready for that. We're not afraid of it. But the problem is, is when you start going to court, you know these bills turn into next thing you know we're we're talking fifty, oh, 60, seventy, eighty thousand yeah. dollars legal bills, hundred thousand dollars in legal bills, yeah. and that's not fun for anybody. You know, it's not it's not fun to to have anything locked up for six months to a year or two years while we're working something out in court. Um, so the regulatory body a lot of times tips that scale. So if the regulatory body is not really for us, then then it forces us to go even deeper, even harder in, in, in certain areas. And really, I mean, anything reasonable should be able to be negotiated and handled in mediation. There's no need to go to court over a tow bill. And there right. just there can't be any real reason to do that. Yeah, the only reason I would say is to set precedence, right? So if you have, right. so if you have, I have, uh, I've had several clients that run into a tow. They'll run into a tow company several times just because they're so deep in that in that area. 
Um, and then it gets to a point where they just want to set precedents, right? They want to show the tow company that, you know, you can set do, an example. Yeah, I mean, every time you do this, we're going to spend money. And, and, it, and it works sometimes, um, but it's tough because, like, even when you get into insurance companies, and, and we see this a lot where, um, you know, the adjusters and the supervisors right, right above the adjusters, you know, they're, they're pissed about it. They're tired of being abused. They're tired of being disrespected. They're tired of being, you know, bullied into having to pay these ridiculous bills that they know are not right. And they want to do something about it. And when you start diving into it, unfortunately, when you start going up, the ladder in the, in the insurance companies, you know, you start looking, they, you know, the, the executives are looking at profits, they're looking at expense versus, you know, risk and all these different things. And, and it just is not worth it. So this is another thing that's kind of played into the tow companies being able to get away, get away with this is that everybody has their own interest, right? So the broker cares about, you know, their interest and the carrier cares about their interest and the insurance company cares about theirs. And, and because there's not a unified front, and I don't think there ever probably will be, it's very easy for the tow company to divide and conquer and then just go in there and attack, you know? Yeah, no. And I, I mean, when you were talking about how they play people off each other and get the party, yeah, I could see, you know, if they, they create the situation, well, we've got this stuff. So go, you guys go ahead and argue. Yeah. I'll yeah. be over here. Just let me know. We're right. just going to shut the gates and we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. And we'll be <laughs> We're just keep charging you six hundred dollars a day, and exactly. you know, God, listen, I, 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 you know, listen, I, I'm with you. You know, you're an owner operator, and you need this truck, and I want you to have the truck, but your damn insurance company's not paying the bill. I mean, you don't you pay insurance for that? I mean, isn't that what you pay insurance for? Call the insurance company and, and tell them to pay the damn bill, and then there you go. And, and, just, and it's it's another situation where there you are, you're the small person, and you're yelling under a little plexiglass circle window. I need my truck, and they're like, well, you know. <laughs> right, right your insurance company that's the problem problem right there not you. us yep. wow it's really it's a fascinating topic um and i could see it getting i mean i, I could see it really getting out of hand fast um and it's one of those things plus if you're dealing with a company that feels like they've got um executive privilege by having somebody up on the food chain yep. um and they also don't have a whole lot of education all they know is just keep beating, beating the, keep beating the baseball bat in your hand. I mean, they're going to give up. They're just going to give up. Yep. Yep. Oh man. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah, um, most, most people don't know. No, most, you know, you just, you never hear about it really, but, but it, it's definitely, I mean, it happens. I mean, every single day we get flooded with tow cases. I mean, it happens. I mean, every day, I mean, I can look at our, 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 I mean, we, we probably had somewhere between 10 to 15 submitted today. I mean, it's just, they just, they just come in every day and it's, and it's, it's just something and a wow. new thing that's happening now is they're actually getting they're, They've changed it up. So it used to be big inflation where they'll, they'll take a bill and they'll inflate it up to 80 or 90 grand. Um, now there, there seems like a lot of tow companies are realizing that adjusters, if they see a $30,000 bill, a $35,000 bill, because they're so used to pay, having to deal with these outrageous bills, these big ones, They'll just pay the bill, but the bill, even though they're paying forty five, forty five thousand dollars or thirty five thousand dollars, which is a little more comfortable, the bill should have only been ten or fifteen. Right. And because it's right under that radar, it just the checks just get, you know, cut. So, it's uh, yeah, it's very, wow. very interesting. And also, like, see, like a big pile up in a blizzard that yeah. you see in like PA or in Wyoming, right? Yep. I mean, that must be just. That's got to be bananas. I've always thought that's got to be bananas, but you add this. Yeah, you're talking, you're talking, you know, 15, 20 people involved. I mean, when you start going into all the brokers, all the insurance companies, all the, the parties involved, all of the risk, all of the, all of the exposure, it, it becomes nuts. And again, for a tow company, that's a big payday. Well, you know, we're talking two hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand dollar tow bill. If you have a big pile up, you probably have multiple tow companies, right? Well, sometimes it depends on where you're at depends on where you're at and wow and how they how they set it up and, and what they're going to do um and then and then you know one other one i'd probably throw out also that we're starting to get a lot of it started probably a couple of years ago we started noticing this was tow companies we started noticing that um in some places tow companies were uh their bills were coming in really clean but we started to figure out that there's environmental companies on every single tow bill right and what we figured out was tow companies were literally opening environmental companies, right? 
like environmental hazard companies. And what they would do is they would, they're regulated on the tow list. So they would show up as a tow company, their bill would be spot clean, but they would contract to an environmental company that the tow company owner actually owned the environmental company. <laughs> the environmental company would rack the bill, right? And sure. then it was a hazmat situation. So they would oh, go, right. And then you're looking, and then you're looking at the, you're looking at the, the cargo and you're going like, how did, how did like, you know, five plates of marble go hazmat? Like what, where the hell's the environmental company coming from? Right. And it's, and it's just a whole, I mean, they're pretty elaborate, man. It's, 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 it's very, uh, right. Yeah, and and now you've got the B movie attorney like, well, you wouldn't want to be unsafe, would you? Yeah, well, you wouldn't want to be unsafe, right? <laughs> I mean, we, we were just making sure. I mean, we don't know the granted, you know, COVID's out there. We don't know. Right. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. You have the, well, and I was, you know, I was thinking, and it's almost like the resort fees. You've got yeah. resort fees. Well, right. I don't know, whatever that is. It sounds <laughs> right. COVID right. fees. Yeah. <laughs> right, of course. All right, well, here's what we're going to do. We are going to bring, we're going to come back in the panel. Um, Dan, stick around because we're going to bring in Rich and we're going to bring in Brendan and we're going to keep going. So, guys, stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, guys, Ty, CTS Business Coaching. I connect dealers, auctions, and carriers. If you're a dealer and you're not getting your inventory on the lot in five days ready to sell, you've got a problem. It's called interest. Like I'm telling you something you don't know. Give me a call. I can connect you with an auction and a carrier. And you can get your cars on the lot in five days or less. 417-483-2764. Thanks and have a great day. Dispatcher to driver, do you wish that you had somebody else helping you look for loads? You're looking for somebody to just watch those routes and get the really good stuff, right? You want a dispatcher to watch a load board during those times where you can't, because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody to help you make sure you stay loaded. And all we do is sit at computers, look at load boards, and make phone calls. That's what we do. Okay, I heard the doorbell. All right, here, let me uh, shuffle some things around. Let's see, where is my... Okay, so Brendan is joining us right now. Rich will be with us in a second. And there we go. And um, let's see, make sure I got the audio on. Oh, here's Rich joining us right now. Brendan is checking his audio. Listen, if you're just joining us now, eh, you haven't missed anything. Well, you've missed a little bit. You're going to want to go ahead and back and rewind that. But if you are just joining now, you are joining with Brendan and Rich. We're in the Abusive Tow Authority Show. And we are talking about abusive tow bills, excessive tow bills. And here, let's do this. Um, okay. Brendan and Rich, can you see me and hear me okay? Yes, sir. We see you. All right. Mic check. I hear you guys. And by the way, let me know out there in TV land if the audio's okay, if the video's okay, if the stream has gone crazy. All right, starting in order by which I knew you, Rich, friend of the show, VP of Insurance at PFA Transportation Insurance Surety Services. Rich, how are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for having me back, man. Dude, it's great to have you, man. I appreciate it. And you helped me uh, wrangle Brendan from Accident Plan. Brendan, how are you doing, man? Doing great. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it, Rich. Good to see you again. Dan, pleasure to finally meet you. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Very nice to meet you as well. How's it going, Rich? Very good. Good to see you guys. Awesome. And by the way, um, I don't think I have to do much to kick this off because I saw... Brendan, you had posted a couple things in the live chat, and I didn't read it because I thought, well, you're going to be here with us anyways. Um, let's go ahead and kick off our abusive toe panel with a question from Brendan. What have you got? Well, uh, Dan, I say I it's pretty clear that you've got the back end of this really sewn up and helping solve this problem in a reactive manner. One of my questions, and we see it in our clientele all the time, is, and one of the things we're trying to circumvent, when uh, 
what happens when the motor carrier can contact that tow company? Can they get a jump on law enforcement and uh, prevent that tow from being non-consensual by calling their contracted tow provider before law enforcement? Yeah, they, they can. It some sometimes it works, um, it works for them, and sometimes it works against them, depending on depending on the state and depending on how well they set it up, right? So, so when you when when you get into if I, if I was going to structure it um, the right way, what I would say is you definitely want to get some training in there with the drivers, right, on how they're going to do it. You want to get some train some training in there with dispatch on how to deal with um, that incident once it happens. Because again, it's an intense situation. Accident just happened. Everybody's freaking out. You know, everybody's you know calls are going everywhere. And and if you if you don't take your time to get your ducks in a row with the tow company. It can actually hurt you in the sense that, like, if you pick up the phone, you call the tow company and you say, hey, I had an accident. You know, I want you to go out there before non-consensual goes out there. And even if you go ahead of time, talk to the officer somehow and let them know, hey, I'm sending my own tow company out there and so on and so forth. If you don't get the right documentation in place up front, the tow company might be really nice on the phone and go, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll take care of you. And you may call someone that's not on the rotation list and, and they're happy that they got that opportunity to go on that deal. And then next thing you know, they go out there, they build out the inflation, then they have your truck, trailer, and cargo. And then when you try to negotiate it, the regulatory body goes, well, you guys negotiated it. So we're not getting involved with this. And then next thing you know, it works against you, right? So the key would be to really practice how you deal with that situation, um, you know, uh, proactively. And then have your documents in, in line and things of that nature. So you can at least get some, something in writing saying what the rates were going to be, what you're agreeing upon, so on and so forth, and kind of get that sewed up. So when, so when it's all said and done, um, you know, you don't get hit with a bill and, and then uh, hurt yourself. Yeah. The, the idea from our side is to uh, involve, involve the contracted tow network ahead of time and get that number programmed into the driver's protocol so that when they are on the scene that uh, dispatch and safety all get the message and everybody can roll that that contractor with those pre-negotiated rates before law enforcement even shows up on the scene that's yeah, that, that, that's how we're treating it with our clients no that's that's a that sounds like a fantastic solution i think that's uh uh, doing that, especially if everybody's on the same page and you guys are on the same team and you're on the same team with the tow company, um, then that and then that that's obviously a, a good solution. And again, you know, not all tow companies are bad people. You know, there there's a there's a lot of good ones out there. So if you can get the good ones locked in, then that's that's definitely the way to go. Right. I was thinking that too. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are tow companies that want to work with you and represent you. And right, if you're using Accident Plan, then you've already got a relationship, right? That, right. that, that actually makes a lot of sense. At this time, I do. I want to share, if you haven't been to AccidentPlan.com, which is, Brendan, you, you're the founder of Accident Plan. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. And so you want to go to AccidentPlan.com and find out how to be ready for, it's not if, right? It's when. It's when. Right, Rich? Unfortunately, bad days happen. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, and let me share, I'm going to share rich. I'm going to share it's PFA protects.com. Correct. Where are you in this transaction, rich? What's going on? How do you, how did you get involved in one of these? Well, I, I, you know, I hang around with a bunch of truck insurance people and uh, that's how you get to know two guys like this, you know, and I've had the opportunity to learn a lot from them because they're their niche and their expertise in, in all of it. Actually, Dan and I were at a function with a very large insurance broker who was just singing the praises of how this guy got cargo released from a scoundrel and said, you know, they, they saved us, you know, they saved the day that cargo could have been out of control. Right. And so, we, we hit on it, I think, before when, when either Brendan was on or possibly Tommy, you know, sometimes your insurance is not with a single carrier. And so now they know that, right? They're going to divide this thing up because they're going to throw that, that bill for that hazmat towards the auto liability. And then they've got the physical damage for the comp and collision on that tractor trailer. And then that cargo, you know, that hundred grand, that's that's what really got locked up. So, you know, send us our $75,000 tow bill so you can get your stuff back. 
and we're racking up how many how many hundreds of dollars a day, right, Dan? As right. You're, you're holding your stuff. Yep. So it's not getting any cheaper. So that's that's where you know seeing them and and where I sit in the midst of all this is we are an insurance provider. We're taking care of our customers. I I want I want our insurance companies to get the the best that they can at the lowest price possible, right? And so if they can get a guy like Dan to come in there, if Brendan's policy or program, I should say, can help get ahead of those claims. That's where we still continue to advocate this kind of stuff. So freight brokers is who we do business with a lot. They're, they're again, another step or two removed from all this, right? So can we help them become aware of it? And how can they be finding motor carriers and even coaching their motor carriers on some of this stuff? And, you know, they may find out that, that that cargo load is held hostage, right? And nobody seems to have an answer. I would I would hope that somebody's watching this thing and say, hey, that guy down in Tucson's who I got to get a hold of. That just it would be a nightmare. What I, I I'd love to hear some of the nightmare situations, a nightmare situation. Paint us a nightmare. Tell well, us a bedtime story. We had one just this morning. I was talking to one of our clients, a, a very large enterprise carrier, uh, and we were talking about uh, we were talking about accidents and accident plan and all of that. And she said that, uh, and the subject of towing came up, and we had her writing them up and towing them in, and everybody else's tow bill was twenty four thousand dollars. This client's bill was fifty four thousand dollars, and the contractor's truck was locked up. The trailer was totaled, so there was no worry there, and it was empty, so there was no cargo problems. But this guy couldn't get his equipment out, couldn't get on the road, so I referred her straight to Dan, and uh, uh, the client referred Dan's uh, Dan's operation straight to her contractor. They were very grateful to pull it off. So I don't know where that stands. That just happened today, but right. that's that's a typical situation, right, Dan? Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and the horror stories. I mean, I can, I, I, we, I, I'm sure we could. Uh, if I, if I start digging them up, it seems like every single one is, is some kind of special horror story. But, um, you know, we just, uh, we, we just had one this last week where we were dealing with. Oh, what state were we in? So I, I'm, I'm a little far removed at this point from, from dealing with them on the, the day to day sure. staff that actually, that actually handles it. But um, yeah, it's tough to be the boss. Yeah, but we had we had one where um, the bill came in and it was um, I believe we were we were upwards of like ninety some thousand dollars. Um, we we projected that the bill should have been somewhere around thirty thousand um, dollars. It was a scenario where uh, we had uh, uh, perishable goods on the uh, on the reefer still. Oh and man was and it was uh salvageable and i can't remember what it was but it was something you know it was, it was something that was that they that they could salvage they just needed to be able to get it transloaded they had everything set up um and the tow company just pretty much you know dug their feet in the in, in the sand and, and said you know they're they're not releasing it and um by the way we're not putting you know we're not going to leave the reefer on anymore any longer either if we if you guys don't pay this bill so, oh my gosh! It's like we're gonna They're gonna turn the switch off. off. We're gonna turn the switch off. And wow! Not our responsibility, and and you know, and then Amazing. the time is really the time is really ticking, right? Um, so we had to go in, and and uh, you know, we luckily on this one, the regulatory body we were in place where the regulatory body cooperated with us was able to step in. The tow company actually sent us the we're gonna tow we're gonna turn off the perishable goods in writing. They actually sent that to us in an email. Which was wow! Not, not so bright. Um, yeah, the judge is gonna love this. Yeah, so we were able to wow we to turn that around to them. They called uh, a, an attorney friend that was a injury attorney and someone that was not <laughs> not, really, not really equipped for this. But luckily, <laughs> their, their friend was able to tell them, "Yeah, you should you should now now that you sent that email, you should release you should release this." So they were able they were able to uh, you know release it, and then we were able to get the bill down. Um, it was a tough one because you know, it, it, which happens a lot, where we we were able to get the bill down to, uh, I believe it was somewhere in the mid 50s, but we wanted to go deeper. But the problem was, is it was getting so contentious that the insurance company was not willing to let it escalate, right? So then, right, because what's the value of the cargo? Right, right. So it was a scenario. Right. Where it was like you know, we just we we took care of it, or we got it reduced, not as far as we wanted it to be, but. 
um, you know, enough for people to be satisfied. So, uh, but that's just like, again, that's like the typical, you know, thing. They, they get pretty crafty, pretty creative. And then, so then how are you feeling, Rich, back at the insurance office after you guys have wrote that check because you had to get it done? Well, Dan, Dan made a very interesting comment early on. You know, he talked about generations of doing this. I can remember in a, in a uh, generation where I was a much younger man, about 25 at least years ago, I can remember being on a flight with a couple of my cohorts for that insurance company. One was an attorney, one was the adjuster. And they were going to Illinois to visit a towing company who has a name very comparable to an airport in Chicago. And that particular towing company had uh, been attempting to charge a very gnarly, excessive amount to our, to our claim. And our adjuster was telling him how unfair that was. And the guy just kind of pulled back his coat to reveal that he was carrying a sidearm. And at that point in time, our adjuster just got in his grabbed his briefcase and left, right? Came back to Nebraska, kind of licking his wounds. And that's why the attorney went along because she she was going along to uh, explain what, what regulatory wise is right and that you're not going to coerce in that manner. So, you know, Dan does a great job of getting them rolled back on their heels. And next time he shows up, they, they know what's going to happen to him. So- yeah. But one of the things that, that I have heard from you recently, Dan, watching some of your videos, you know, their their tactics are changing, right? Yeah. And, and they're coming up with new and different creative ways to jack the bills up. So, yeah, you just yeah. You, you need you need you need a community to help you through this stuff. Right, and that's why we created that forum is just so we can trade that those tactics because, you know, as we've we've started to see that um, it's tougher out there. You know, when we first started. You know, we were able to get these things wrapped up. You know, we are, are at one point in time, our average turnaround was 48 to 72 hours. I mean, we literally were able to get these things from start to finish, release, reduction, money transferred, the whole nine yards within, you know, 48 to 72 hours. Now we're up to about seven days um, because as you keep going around and we keep hitting the same tow company, right? They, they start to remember what happened on the last one and they get a little, they, they're a little more crafty. They're a little more, they're in a, be, a better position. Some of these, some tow companies that we've dealt with several times have finally just decided to put attorneys on payroll and it's, it, they're, they're starting to kind of protect themselves and, and, and try, or at least, you know, I don't want to call it protect themselves, but, but protect their, uh, you know, their, whatever it is that they're doing. So they're yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're creating a defense system, right? So they um, so it's it's definitely becoming tougher. And the big one that we're seeing, like I said, right now is that hazmat um, uh, move that's being made, where they're they're owning other companies and then they're sending another company that's not under regulation. Um, and then the other one is the small bills. Like we're starting to notice that there's major inflation in small bills now. We're seeing, you know, t- you know, uh, bills under thirty grand getting a a hundred percent uptick which it's small i mean it's small in the grand scheme of things but you get you get killed by a thousand cuts and i know that you're passionate about that uh uh rich as far as what it what it does to the bottom line number at the end of the year you know it just you you start you start really getting you know cut up with that so yeah the tactics are definitely changing for sure good a couple of years ago but i mean it was only a twenty thousand dollar bill and i you know i expressed that to dan i mean i, I looked at this thing in missouri and I, I wasn't even on the scene. I just looked at the description of the loss and the damages, and I'm like, "This is a twenty thousand dollar tow bill, really?" Yeah, nobody saw that coming. Yep, yep. And those bills, you know, the adjuster just strokes the check because it's so. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're like they, you know, it, when you're, it's just a yeah. I mean, it's it's a tough scenario. It's definitely it's t- definitely a tough scenario. And the and the the hard part is again, everybody's you know has their own interests and everybody's in their own space and it's hard to get everybody on the same page. And that's kind of why we're doing all the education with the ATA page and the group and all that stuff. So, so on those, on those six, seven day deals, Dan, are you able to get the cargo out of there? Are you able to help that? I mean, that's a big challenge for these guys, the goodwill to their customer, right? They don't want to lose that, that cargo or they don't want, they don't want that load to be lost. You know, yeah, we'll fix that bill thing later on, but are you able to get that released early? Yeah, we, we um, that's, there's, there's two things that we, we shoot for right off the bat. Um, one of them is getting the cargo gone. If the cargo, if the cargo is salvageable, um, getting it out of there immediately is a, is a big deal. Um, and we, you know, we have a lot of different ways to try to, 
paint the picture to the tow company that they're basically, you know, if they're going to cause an issue with it or they're going to cause a claim because of it um, or cause something to, you know, to, to go completely bad, um, they're going to own it. Right. And we're going to and we're going to make sure that they're, they pay for that. Um, and then the other thing that we do is while we're under negotiation, we're pretty successful at getting them to waive all storage fees under the negotiation. So while we're negotiating, um, you know, our clients, if they if they have a point of inflation and we can get them to, um, you know, get, get them to a point where it's clear that there's a point of inflation, we're really good at being able to get them to waive any storage fees while we were negotiating. So there's no additional attack on there. And I just want to say for the audience, right? All right, you're hearing all this. What what does this mean to me? It means your loss ratio. It means your losses on your insurance company's, you know, experience is impacted by all this, right? So if he if he just knocked off five thousand dollars in toast in tow storage charges, I should say, that's that that that's against your loss ratio. Loss ratios are premium and losses. And so these kind of tactics, if your adjuster is asleep at the wheel. You know, all of a sudden that thing goes out as, uh, you know, he had a $75,000 claim. Well, I'm sorry, that was a bad claim, but it could have been maybe a $45,000 claim. Right. That's huge. Right. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Right. Because yep. I was thinking, who sucks up all this? All this money comes from somewhere. It comes from the insurance, right? Unfortunately, yep. Well, and, and, here, and here's another thing, and Dan can make you speak a little bit. Dan can speak a little bit to this. There are some times that the amount of tow um, dollars available inside the policy are limited. Yep. And as soon as that cap hits, guess what, trucker mm -hmm. buddy, yep. they're coming after you. They got to cover. They got to cover the rest. And a lot That's of times, crazy. a lot of times we see that we see this all the time actually, where the carrier had no clue. Right. Like, you know, you're talking about uh, you know, Brandon with accident plan. You know, being able to to get them, you know, um, get them covered and they don't, you know, they, 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 they're paying insurance. They didn't read everything on the policy when they signed up for it. Right. They just wanted the lowest premium. And then all of a sudden it's like they run into the situation and they're like, well, the insurance is supposed to cover it and insurance covered what they're supposed to cover, but, but you have the rest. And, and, it, and it, it's, it's, um, and we see it every day. I mean, we see it every day and, and it can, again, it wipes carriers out. I mean, we see companies literally just go out of business. They just think, you know, you, if your rig's caught in, in there and you can't, and you're, you have one, one rig, you're done. Okay. And, and not to mention, if you get a claim, a cargo claim, and, and you did something, you know, if you did something wrong and all of a sudden the claim ends up falling back on you, you're, you know, it's, it's over and the company carrier goes out of business. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you, you have small operators on here. I can remember a, a fleet of mine that had an independent contractor. They didn't pay any attention to whether or not that guy was keeping his non-trucking liability, his comp and collision on his tractor. He's the one that rolls the vehicle, you know, in the Midwest, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have any any protection. So the driver just walks away. He says to, the, to them, you can have it. Yep. Well, now they're coming after the fleet in order to get that tow bill paid for. And yeah, they got to beat up Volvo and, you know, they want to get their cargo and their trailer back. So those, those are, those are aggravations too. And there, and there are accidents every day. I mean, what are the statistics on trucking accidents daily? 295,000 recordable accidents in the U.S. every year. And so that's really I, I, about one every eight minutes. Right. Oh, my yeah. God. That's, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And that, and, and he, by the way, Jay. But, but he said, Jay, those are recordable. So that means that it was a hearse, a nurse, or a tow. That means that somebody died or somebody went to a hospital or the vehicle got towed away under certain conditions that got cited. What, what about that guy that just scraped a telephone pole as he was leaving the yard, right? That's, mm -hmm. a, that's an accident that's not in those statistics. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. So welcome to day one of trucking school. We're really happy you're here. Just want to let you know, there are 295,000 trucking accidents a year. Don't be one of them. Don't be one of them. Okay, now turn the page on your intro manual. <laughs> well, and, and that brings up another question sure. for Dan. Uh, since, since our responsibility and our little, our, our little uh, niche of this market is taking care of what the driver does at the scene, 
because right. the driver is the only one representing the motor carrier at the scene in all aspects and by proxy rich representing the insurance carrier what uh what do you what dan what do you say to the driver what if you could if you could if if you were a part of the orientation class and right. you had you had five minutes to speak there what would you say to the that 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 driver class yeah so the first thing i would the first thing that i would spend uh my time on is is explaining to them why it matters to, to care because i think that it, it sometimes it gets you know, again, they, you get this kind of perception that I have insurance, so it's just going to get covered, right? And, and when you start thinking like that, this is where the trickle down comes. This is where you get surprised with the tow bill that you didn't know about. So, so really going into making sure that they understand that, you know, every every action has a reaction, and make sure you're covered properly, right? Make sure you're going to the right place to get the cut right coverage. Um, and then while you're dealing with the, the tow company, you know, take pictures, use that smartphone. I mean, that that thing is like one of the most powerful things that uh, that you could have on you. Um, if you're recording it, a lot of the points of inflation are right there on the scene. I mean, you, you, you pull up a video. Can't tell you how many times we've, we've seen a video. Or we've seen pictures. And you see five guys sitting there and they're not doing anything the whole time. Right. Or you see a bunch of equipment parked off on the side and it's just nothing's happening or something gets damaged and you catch it on video and, and there it is. Right. And it's just so. So being able to use that, um, you know, that camera, you know, make sure that you're pointing it. Look at look at the, uh, uh, you know, the, the signs on the side of the tow company. Make sure that they're you know, it's not a scenario where they're shifting environmental companies and all this different stuff and, and just documenting. You know, paying attention to when when did the you know when did the tow company get there? When did they leave? Right? If you can, I mean, I know that you can't do that on every situation, but if you can, documenting timestamps and things of that nature, um, and just really uh, putting yourself in a position where you have enough documentation to tell the story. And the more documentation you have to tell the story, uh, number one, it helps on the reactive side, but a lot of times it helps on the proactive side too because. If you're doing it openly, the tow company is going, oh, well, these guys are recording stuff. You know, they're, they, they, they see that you're actively on it. You're asking questions, you're paying attention, you know, so on and so forth. And when you're doing that, um, you know, they, they just, there's a little, there's, there's, there's less of a chance of them just thinking they're going to get over on everybody. So that's what I would, I would probably uh, recommend. Yeah, they're taking advantage of the ignorance. There's no, there's no doubt about that. And Absolutely. so, yeah. Absolutely. And, like you say, the driver's shaking up while he's out there. So I'm just gonna say, you're, that's a perfect time to take advantage of somebody. They're already shaken up. Yeah, and, and yeah, you hardly ever, and you hardly ever see contention between the driver and the tow company. Usually, they're best friends on the scene, and and it, and it, and you know the tow companies, they're they're nice. They're just going out there, they're having conversations, and everything's you know everything's cool and hunky dory, and then billing gets involved. And actually, you know you got just to say the guy on the scene, he's cool. Yeah, right, right. right. But he's not the one you're going to see at the small window. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. That's how that works. That's how that works. Wow. That is amazing. Um, you know, it's cool to have you guys here uh, in, in one central live location. Um, you know, uh, this is an opportunity. I think we have, it's, not, it's a quarter to ten. So let's do this. Let's take another ten to fifteen minutes uh, to just soak in that we're live we're talking about abuse of tow and um brendan you've raised some good points so have you rich uh dan you've had a lot of great information but what 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 didn't we talk about you know you're talking about knowledge is key and i like that because brendan has accident plan is an app to help you and your company be prepared for what happens in the accident are you saying so then at some point so, right, you're, here you are. You're in an accident. Okay, open your app, right? Follow through the prompts, take the photos, things like that. Is there an area then that gets into talking to the tow company? Well, uh, you know, what? Uh, along the lines of what Dan said, is uh, our motto is control the narrative, control the claim. So uh, yeah, we we're we're right in alignment with that. When you can, if you can't control that story, somebody else is going to control it for you. And so um, we've there's a couple of points, uh, a couple of times during the process that we address towing. And the first one is in the uh, primary assessment. We ask that driver, does your truck need a tow? 
And so if the driver answers yes, then a message goes back to goes back to HQ and says the driver needs a tow so that the, the dispatcher or the safety team can start managing that tow and get that get that wrecker scrambling before law enforcement has a chance to make the non-consensual one. And then later on, as the scene develops and we're gathering information, we have an entire page just devoted to documenting all towing activities. We probably don't have enough detail in it. So, you know, uh, Dan laid on a lot of detail. So I'd want to, I want to parse through that and see, you know, what can we expect a driver to be able to get? How many questions can we expect him to answer? And the good ones will do it. They will do it. They all want to do good work. Right. And so that's what we do is just document. If we could just teach them, just get them to document, take picture, take picture, take picture. And then I think probably how we'll change is to make sure we've already told them to make sure to collect business cards from all the tow operators. But I want to make sure to take pictures of every door of every truck that's out there and its position relative this, to the scene. I think we're going to fine tune it a little bit that way. Yeah, that, and that would be powerful too, especially if, if you have somebody going out and they're 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 actively walking up to to the rigs and doing that, it becomes so apparent that someone like they're definitely coached, that they're not they're not ignorant. And the next thing you know, you know, again that proactive, you you, you just stop it before it even happens. Right. Right. And so that's where like Dan, you're talking about having the knowledge. And what's great is with what Brendan's created with Accident Plan, not only do you have the knowledge, but you're able to walk through it in real time. I mean, right there, you could save off 10, 15 grand off the tow bill, maybe? Yeah, without, without a doubt. And that's and that's an awesome Amazing. thing. You know, when you, you know, I'm, I'm big on checklists and that's, that's what that app sounds like it's, it's doing is like, you know, you're, you, when you're, when you get in the accident and, and again, you're, you're frazzled, you're, you're, you're scared, you you're, all these things are going on, adrenaline's kicking and being able to default back to something that's going to guide you is, is, is very, very important. And it, it allows you to take the proper action. So, so you're completely protected. So I think that's awesome. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, very appreciate cool. It. Right on. That's right. This is a B to B show. Okay. So, uh, so, Rich, we got ten minutes left. I know you always have great nuggets of information. What's going on? What, what are you thinking right now? What's something that we haven't covered? Or well, I'm thinking about? back to presentation, Tommy Rook, right? Yeah, my truck Tommy. Insurance, thank my, you. my truck insurance geek buddies, yeah. right? So, you know. Dan did a great job there of pulling stuff back together. I mean, I've done these driver meetings. That's what that's what Brendan's got going. Dan spoke to it. You know, I've done this with drivers. You know, if, if we all do our job right, right, we, we're we're on time. We've delivered that accident free. Everybody gets to go home and be happy. Bad days happen, right? What's going to happen on a bad day? How do you keep your head on straight? And there's so many things going on, and the adrenaline rush is is incredible. Dan just said it, you know, a checklist. If you don't have an accident plan uh, application to help you, you need to have a checklist. And he's, he's put some resource material out there for, for the truck insurance geeks, I know. And I'm sure that, that some of that's out there on the, on the site or is going to be a part of the ATA's uh, overall product offering in time. So I, I love what he's doing, but this is, this is really you – having a heart to heart with yourself if you're the driver or or your drivers to say you know what what can we do and not to be gory about it but i mean something really bad could happen and what if, what if you ended up in jail you know what if this jeopardized your career you don't want to have that kind of stuff happen either so i think that's critical and, and, and in this time period right now it's really funky weird. I haven't heard what it looks like on an accident scene, but all this COVID stuff, you know, if it's hazmat, all these guys show up in these funky suits. Uh, our, our, our son's an RN paramedic fireman, you know, he's got three buddies that went out to help a guy that was having a heart attack. Guess what? He was COVID-19 positive. Now he's got two, two buddies in quarantine and one that's got COVID-19 from trying to resuscitate a guy with a heart attack. They didn't take his temperature. They didn't ask him if he's had symptoms, right? right. He's having a flipping heart attack. So, you know, the, the point is you don't know what's going to go on anymore these days. And uh, the Good Samaritan may not be there that used to be there. So anything that you can do to help your drivers and to, and to prepare, yep. 
for the well, absolute worst. And we're, I, I saw it, it was in industry news I was sharing. I mean, you've got people of all walks of life trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet, get into a new job, and they're considering trucking. And you've got, I mean, you've got people that have almost no trucking background. And if you're that devious tow company, I mean, this is great. That's Christmas. Let me, let me let me interject a note. If you've got a CDL, your value just went up right now because truck driver training schools can't put people out. They can't get to training centers and they can't get on the road. So now the trucking companies are fighting for the for the guys that are out there. You know, and Gina was on a few months ago talking about the drug and alcohol clearinghouse that's taking guys out of seats because they're getting caught for being dirty on drugs and alcohol, right? So, oh, man. you know, the, the, the challenge is real. And if you're so trying to get drivers behind the wheel, you know, you're, you're fighting in a, in a, in a condensing amount. Right. Yeah. The, the industry is not full of, is not full of lifers. It's the majority of them out there are, 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 are one to three to five years, five years out there as a seasoned veteran. And, uh, it's uh, you, there's a lot of experience that's just leaving the road so wow hey uh before i forget candy posted a question okay this is a little off track but i'm gonna ask it because i'll bet somebody's got something interesting to say carriers are lying about delivery to port to the port okay so you got you have random Auto transporters lying about the delivery to the port. They're taking the cars back to South Florida, telling customers it was rejected from the port. They immediately send notarized mail, high, high re-delivery cost, unlawful daily storage. These exporters feel helpless. What body regulates motor carriers acting in this capacity? Yeah, I'd have to check on that. I don't have an answer for that one. Right, but it's got some similarities. Yeah, yeah, definitely some definitely sounds like there's some some abuse in there. Um, I could I, I could probably uh, write that one down and maybe it, it, can I go back into this chat? I don't know how Zoom. Uh... Yeah, well, so let's do this. So Seaport Service is Candy's live chat handle. Candy, do you want to post your email address? Um, if you do, go ahead and post your email address in the live chat or email me which actually i can here's what i can do is um forward it to me yeah exactly i'm yeah. gonna forward this to dan there we go thank you you know and, dan, dan, and, dan's and I, a legal guy and, and he's gonna look it up you know you i'll just i'll just speak from this level you got a couple different jurisdictions going on there you know if this all goes on in florida that's one thing you know, if you're moving that under a bill of lading in the FMCSA world, you know, what, what regulatory um, violations, you know, you're, you're not, you're not acting as a good character when it comes to that, right? Uh, we see this abuse in the auto household goods thing, just like, you know, there's, there's people that say, we're going to move your car and then they get it. And then they're trying to upcharge you, right? Just like the household goods scammers. And, uh, we're trying to find the regulatory body. I know that there is a, a, a place where you can turn them in in the, in the federal um, federal government's websites. Mm -hmm. Trouble is enforcement. Nobody goes after them. Nobody's <laughs> dead. Nobody's bleeding. And Nobody's that's, money. And that's typically, yeah. And, and anytime you run into regula regulatory, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I deal with, you know, the other side of Morgan Kona Box business. You know, we deal with, you know, tons of different regulatory bodies in different spaces and industries. And the one thing that they all have in common is when you get on the government level is uh, execution and, and enforcement. You know, it, it's a scenario where they have a complaint forum or they have a complaint form and a complaint department, but it's tough to get them to actually do something, you know? So being that squeaky wheel and being able to, you know, at least put the pressure in those areas uh, is usually what's required to, to get any action taken. So. And, if, and if the Fed's doing inspection, right, are they bad enough? You know, do they do they consider them to be unsafe, you know, to the public? You know, so that's that's one of the things that going after them. If they if you do call down an inspector to come in there and they see that they're not doing drug and alcohol testing and that they don't have hours of service in order and things like that, then they could then they could get shut down that way. 
as long as they don't start up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which they. <laughs> so we've got a lot of information now. I mean, if you if you didn't if you tuned in and you're thinking, you know, I I hope to never be in that situation. I'll just keep my fingers crossed, and then if it happens, I'll just make sure, I'll just let the insurance companies handle it. Um, well, then you've just got a lot of new perspective because you may have an insurance policy issue or you could have had a checklist um, at your uh, at your fingertips to go through to help you bring down the value of that tow bill in the first place. And if none of that worked, well, you have uh, Dan Oliveri that you could contact at Abusive Tow Authority. Uh, but at least now you have more and new information on this topic. And so if uh, if you're live with us and you spent the time and you joined us, thank you so much. If you watch this on demand later, feel free to leave a comment. Um, let's put some contact info in here. I love to do that before we go. Hey, and uh, Gartha Logistics is here with us. That's cool, man. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Gene is here, by the way. Did I hear Uh-oh. Rich say drug and alcohol testing? Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> I, got, I got to share this with Gina and I were talking the other day. I, I should have worn my COVID mask. So, so guys come in to, to do a test, right? Because they have to, they still got to do that. She can't allow a guy to wear a mask in to take his test. Oh, because they can smuggle in their, uh, their sample. Right in your Ooh. behind your mask. <laughs> that's that's pretty <laughs> disgusting to think about. But but, but you know, you're not talking about Einstein here. That's why so. we bring Masco Smuggle. <laughs> there you go. I got it's got there you. You, go. you can. There it's you go, got Brendan. a handy receptacle. <laughs> So, so Brendan, here, here's a here's a good ambassador to the trucking industry. He's been making masks and giving them away to truckers. Truck, you need to you need That's, to insert. I want one of those. You need to make a place to insert it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, you, so you can smuggle in your. your, your I have, I do. We do. It's got a little pocket right inside here. Where <laughs> there you go. Those are Brendan's my those one. are my Tic Tacs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, that that is... too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good shout out right there You're... for Brendan. He's been making those. His wife's been making those. He's been handing them out to truckers. That looks so really talking. good. That is a great Thanks. idea. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, that was uh, that was in the first couple of weeks when uh, the truckers were out there just flying with no safety net, and uh, and so we uh, it was Easter Sunday we did it, and then we did it a different day. We gave wow. away about. 35 or 40 masks so it's awesome uh, kept Good it up, going. Buddy. you wow. know what there's a driver out there right now that mask means the world to him Oh yeah, I've had had a lot of good good feedback on them from uh, from a lot of drivers. A lot of thanks. I'll reach out on Facebook and stuff like that. Try to try awesome. to support those folks as much as we can. Yeah, amen. It's a tough I mean, it's really tough work being out there in the elements. Anything can happen at any time. It's a hard job on the best days. It's got to be. It's got to be. Mm-hmm. So, um, guys, I know I need to let you go. It's not say goodbye properly. That's wild. Um, yeah, Joseph McCleary says, good timing, Jay. Um, that's funny. <laughs> okay, the stream is back. And now that the stream is back, well, okay. So now we're going to properly say hey, goodbye. Hey, yeah. yeah, you got a couple old guys on here. You shouldn't be talking about a slow, bad stream. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of old guys. Speak for yourself, Rich. <laughs> exactly. I don't know, man. I'm rapidly entering the category, so uh, I better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen. Um, hey, do you? Is there any parting words? Any? Any? Oh, hey, didn't we have a promotion? Do we have something running that we can offer the ATI audience? Uh, yeah, so is uh, anybody that uh, mentions uh, ATI gets 25% off on any uh, reduction. So any 25% off any fees, um, anything legal, 25% off on that as well. Awesome. Okay, so there it is. Um, I'm typing it. Kimberly beat me to it. What were you going to say, 
Brendan? Uh, one quick thing. I just, uh, I sent an, I, I want everybody to know that I sent uh, an email to Dan today uh, with that client story I told you about earlier. And he was back to me like that. It was like five or 10 minutes. He's like, yeah. And he directs the client to his website where he's got a, the most magnificent detailed form where you can just plug in all the details of your problem there and he shoots it off to his people. It just looks like you're running a really smart, efficient system there, Dan. And I just wanted to give you that compliment. I appreciate that. And, it, and I'll tell you, it didn't start out that way. It took a lot of uh, smacking our head against the wall, trying to, trying to put out fires. And then we started figuring out technology is our friend. <laughs> clearly, clearly a very well thought out system. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I, you know, I want to say thank you. I really appreciate that you're making that offer to the ATI audience. Um, Gary, if you have any questions. Well, okay, so what is the best way for somebody to contact you, Dan, if they have a question? Yeah, so so what I would uh, recommend is going to um, – then go to – so we have uh, – a website that's nonconsensualtoe.com. So if they go to nonconsensualtoe.com, uh, it'll direct them straight to uh, the submit form. Uh, they can go to morgancohenenbach.com uh, and, and it'll take them there too. Um, but I, you know, I, I strongly recommend everybody if they're on LinkedIn to uh, jump on that ATA page in that ATA group or join that ATA group because we're going to, we're going to start throwing out a lot of uh, free education there and we're going to be throwing a lot of our offers out there on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is probably going to be our primary platform. And um, it's in, and, and LinkedIn is going to be an easy way to kind of direct into these other areas like the hotline and things of that nature. So um, they can go to any one of those spaces and they can find us. And, and if, again, if you Google abusive toe or inflated toe bill or non-consensual toe, anything you can remember, um, we're going to pop up. And there was also, I know some people like phone numbers. I think it was the 520-442-1303 is yeah. the office number in Arizona. I, I believe that was the one that was sent to me. Yeah, let me... Uh... Before I post it, I just want to make sure. Some people just prefer to make phone calls. Yeah, you no, know, got... You got the Doberman and the fence and the guy with the spotlight and you just... Yeah. Uh, I would go, yeah, so it's the... Um... Sorry, I should, my, I should probably know my own number. No, no so, problem. 520-442-1303 is the front desk in cool. the Tucson office. And then they can call the, um, you know, we have a San Diego uh, location too. So it's 619-503-1642. Okay, and, cool. All right, I got both of those in there. That's awesome. Because having the contact information is key. So it's in there. This information will also be in the video description of the video uh, on YouTube after this video gets processed. And um, I've shared it a couple times, and I'm going to share it again. Highly encourage you to go to accidentplan.com. You can find out more about the app. You can contact Brendan if you have any questions. And I'm also going to share here is pfaprotects.com. That's how you can find out more uh, with Rich and uh, Tommy Rook and MCIEF and Gina and all this stuff. You know, that's what's so cool is, I mean, I've got three consummate professionals on the show right now. And we're really lucky that we were able to spend this much time with you guys. I just really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank My you. Pleasure, Jay. Thank you so much for taking the time. All right, I'm going to let you go. So we're going to close the story time books and end this meeting. And thank you guys so much. And let's be in touch, okay? All right, thanks, guys. I'll good talk night, to you. Everybody. All right, good, good, night. good night, guys. Peace. All right, and that is how we end a Zoom meeting. Oh, and we got the titles and all that stuff and all this craziness on the screen. So what we do is we go to the end of the show screen. Well, we're in double vision, and i got to start shutting down audio channels and all kinds of crazies. Oh, and look, there's me over there behind me. Woo! Okay, we're at the end of the show. Man, I'm telling you, I knew this would be a great show. So much information, and, uh, you know, I, I hope it wasn't overwhelming at all. Uh, or, uh, you know, boring in any way, but this is one of those niche topics that you really need good information. And we, we hate to think about what can go wrong and what could happen, but all the time, you know, we have moments, right? We have moments where we go, oh my God, I'm so glad 
that that worked out and that I'm okay. And then eventually we have the moment where we're like, oh my God, what do I do now? What do I do? And then there's that moment where you're like, man, you know what? I really need, I need somebody with some legal knowledge. Now what do I do? So that's what this show is all about. Um, and I saw some great stuff in the live chat. Thank you guys so much for live chatting and sharing information and asking questions. You're a huge part of this show. I couldn't do it without you. And so I really appreciate you joining me and participating. Let me know if there's something I could do for you. Autotransportintel at gmail.com. If you've got a company product or service that you want to talk about, you want to bring live on Autotransport Intel for an interview, I want to hear from you. Autotransportintel at gmail.com. Uh, you definitely want to tune in next Tuesday night for show 139. I don't have the video thumbnail ready, but I got some interesting news to talk about with Auto Transport Intel and stuff going on on the web and shows and stuff. So it's going to be pretty cool. So I'm, I can't wait to share that with you. So please do join me. And I know I forgot to check. I'm just checking the Facebook pages. Thank you so much for tuning in on Facebook. Um, you know the show is on YouTube and that's where our home is and so I do appreciate it. So listen guys, I want you to stay safe. Oh, and I want you to join us tomorrow. That's right. Um, let me see if I can, uh, if you just can't get enough of me talking and talking and talking, uh, you can join us tomorrow. I'm looking for the link right now. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share this link. I'm going to be live with Ryan Girardi tomorrow. I think our show's at 2 o'clock. And I'm co-hosting a, a live show on autoconversion.net um, every Wednesday around 2-ish. So we'll be live. We'll be talking. And then Thursday is Dispatching Live with Sue and Murphy Auto Dispatch. Man, that's going to be off the hook. Great stuff. And then with Friday, we'll have State of Car Hauling. Ty will be the man on the street that you know and love and we're just going to keep it going around and around and around so listen thank you so much for tuning in to auto transport intel i sure appreciate it i want you to stay safe keep me posted and i'll see you soon